Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel for my review on the newest war film set in World War I. Utilising some stunning visuals and a frequent share of intensity and action, this film is directed by Sam Mendes. So this is Kier's Reviews and this is my review of 1917. I got him. <laughs> Every war film feels like they have the same story each time, Dunkirk, Saving Private Ryan and others, but now 1917 has gone with the same plot. The plot, in summary, is a soldier is told to deliver a message to the Allies while crossing enemy territory. In this way, 1917 and Saving Private Ryan pretty much are the same films, but told with different characters, made in different ways and set in different wars. Even though every war film has this same plot, the thing that makes each good film in this genre stand out is how it's made. For example, Saving Private Ryan took an up-close, realistic and intense view of fighting the enemy, and Dunkirk gave audiences multiple glances into different varieties of combat and war. What makes 1917 noticeable is how this film is one continuous shot. However, for this amazing tactic to be used to approach this war film, it unfortunately has some really noticeable flaws. He slathers it all over his barnet and goes to sleep. And in the middle of the night, he wakes up and a rat is sitting on his shoulder, licking the oil off his head. <laughs> Wilco panics and he jumps up. <laughs> and when he does, the rat bites clean through his knee and runs off with it. Personally, I don't think that in a month's time, I'll remember what happened in 1917 because it's not very memorable. As I said before, it feels like any other war film. However, let's focus on what I really liked about this movie because I did really enjoy it, so please don't mistake me for disliking it. The cinematography was probably the highlight of this experience and blended with the colours and lighting choices, 1917 probably is the best visual war film experience so far. There's one particular sequence where all you can hear are flares going off that produce different colour lighting choices for people to watch. This was a major standout. Accompanying the brilliance of the continuous one-shot cinematography was the really strong acting from the main character, Blake, but also spread throughout 1917 are cameos from some brilliant actors like Benedict Cumberbatch, Richard Madden and Colin Firth, among others. Those are two of the main reasons why I enjoyed this film. Your orders are to get to the second at Kwasi Wood, one mile southeast of the town of Akust. Deliver this to Colonel Mackenzie. It is a direct order to call off tomorrow morning's attack. If you don't, it will be a massacre. We will lose two battalions, 1,600 men, your brother among them. You think you can get there in time? Yes, sir. One thing that definitely can't be ignored coming out of it was how good the one-shot technical aspect was. At times I felt like I was watching a video game because you follow the two main soldiers throughout the whole film. The technical achievement of making this movie a continuous shot is an amazing win for director Sam Mendes, who also made the last two Bond movies Skyfall and Spectre. Making 1917 this way must have been very hard to edit and cut together, and even though there are some parts where a CGI tree or darkness ended up obscuring the screen, the whole film ended up feeling like one shot, so it's a very interesting and thrilling tactic to adopt in a war film. However, every war film has its flaws, and 1917 definitely had some too. One of the main complaints Dunkirk had with its reviews when it came out was that the main characters had no emotional value to them, which is exactly the case with this film. The characters weren't very interesting, and unfortunately I couldn't invest any emotional care into them. Another problem with this film is how stretched out it felt. It's understandable because of how the film was directed and shot, but it took away a bit of the experience as the tension wasn't always there. The intensity definitely was there when it needed to be, but unlike some other masterpiece war movies, it wasn't constantly there, not even an undertone. The build-up of anticipation leading into seeing the film, and given the fact that it won Best Picture in the Drama Genre at the Golden Globes last week, I became very excited, and I guess after experiencing it, I don't see why it's being praised so highly. 1917 is not bad, it's really good, and it's definitely worth seeing in a cinema. Up. 
As with every war film, 1917 had some positives and some negatives, and as much as I'd heard such great things about it going in, I couldn't help but feel a little disappointed. On the big screen it's great, but if you're waiting for a home release, you may not like it as much. The acting and cinematography were great, whereas the emotional value it needed and the pace weren't there when it really needed to be. Being an interesting approach to a film of this genre, 1917 couldn't help but be unfortunately forgettable, so I'm giving this movie an 8.5 out of 10. Thank you so much for watching. Have you seen 1917? Let me know below. If you like what you're seeing here and you want to see even more, check out my channel and be sure to have a look at my previous reviews of The Gentleman and Spies in Disguise. As always, be sure to follow and subscribe to my YouTube channel. This has been Kia's Reviews, signing off for now.